And it's now my privilege to invite Mareika Yonkers to present the graduation address. Congratulations, graduating class of 2015. Yahoo, you did it. You've graduated from the best university in the country. Okay, as an alumni, I might be a little bit biased in, that, in saying that, but it's as a proud alumni that I'm also so honored to be here today as the person chosen to deliver the graduation address. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, and thank you for having us here at your place. I'd like to extend, as such a proud alumni, a thank you to the university for asking me to deliver the graduation address, and in particular for giving me less than a week's notice. It's reminded me exactly what it is like to be a student at university. Sleepless nights, writing speeches, wondering whether Googling JK Rowling's speech to Harvard University is a suitable primary source of research to deliver a graduation address, and finally coming on campus here today and seeing all of you dressed in your graduation outfits just like I was all those years ago sitting in front of you. And in particular, I really enjoyed seeing the kangaroos. Our beautiful kangaroo colony, where else in the world? I've traveled all over the world as a swimmer. Can you study with the colony of kangaroos? I want you to remember those kangaroos. I'm going to come back to them later. I've been asked here to speak as an alumni, but also as a Paralympian. And you all know me as the three-time Paralympian and the three-time Paralympic medalist, but perhaps you don't know the journey that it took to get me here today. Now, my journey isn't as straightforward as most elite athletes. It began as a young girl, five years old, sitting in a little pink wheelchair, watching the Olympics on TV and dreaming of representing my country, wearing the green and gold and having that coat of arms with a kangaroo and emu emblazoned on my uniform. One thing I didn't notice was that I was sitting in a little pink wheelchair. I saw the Olympians on TV, had never heard of the Paralympics, and I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to be the best in the world at something, the best I could be. And today I want to ask you to remember your own childhood dreams and hang on to that wonderful childhood innocence that as adults, we place limits on ourselves. But as a child, I wasn't scared to dream to go to the Paralympics. In fact, when I was 13, I sat down and I wrote a bucket list of four things I wanted to achieve in my life. And I can tell you the top four things on that list, and they were equal. Graduate from university, win a medal at the Paralympics, start a charity, and travel around Europe. The reason I mention that is that today, I value my education and what I've achieved through this university and what it's taken me to in my career as much as these three Paralympic medals. They've both changed my life and molded me into the person I've become. I would not be the person I am or the athlete I was without what I learned at this university. And that will be the same for each of you as you begin your new journey. I really wanna talk about the importance of education. You see, as a young girl at school, often I would be picked on or bullied for being different. But I learned really fast that the education we have is the great leveler. It can take us places in society that nothing else can. You see, if I was smarter than everybody else or I could swim faster than them, I worked out something. I don't need to be able to stand up to stand out. And that's a pretty amazing thing to realize. It's what makes us different that makes us unique. Our education allows us to build on those differences, to bring our uniqueness into the world and create greatness. I believe in this country we have something called tall poppy syndrome. We cut down the people who stand out for being different, for having great new ideas, for trying something different, 
And as a result, we've developed something that I've coined short poppy syndrome. We're now all too scared to stand out and be different. But being different is great. Now, I never had the option of being different. I learned that when I started university and I turned up for a lecture late in my first week. I tried to sneak in the front door and I thought I got away through it until the lecturer says, hi, Mareka. I'm like, oh yes, that wheelchair coming through the door right into the front row wasn't obvious at all, was it? I've always stood out. I've always been different, but being different is great. If you'd be different for being fantastic, be different for being you, your wonderful, unique self. Do not be the short poppy. I'd like to share one story from my sporting career that I hope will give you a lesson you can take away in the life that you lead after you leave this university. It's the story of when I won my final Paralympic medal at the Beijing 2008 Games. I was in the best form of my life. I was swimming faster than ever, training for the 50 meters breaststroke. Having come off the Athens Paralympics with two bronze medals, I was going to go faster than ever before. When one day I was sitting at home, out of the blue, and my phone rings. It's the head coach of the Australian Paralympic team saying, I have some very bad news. I'm so sorry, but the race you've been training for for the last four years, 50 meters breaststroke, it's not on the program anymore. If you want to have any hope of making the team, you'll have to find a new event. The team trials were eight months away. I thought, okay, I better find this new event fast, and I'm not going to panic, no time for panic. I went to the pool that afternoon for training and my coach sat me down and said, Mareka, we need to talk. And I thought, okay, she's heard the news, she wants to talk about it. But no, she said, look, I'm really committed to getting good marks with my PhD that I'm studying at the moment and I just haven't got time to coach you anymore. So I'm so sorry, I'm gonna to have to resign as your coach. So no offense to any of you behind me here who have a PhD, uh, very, very, very wonderful achievement, but wasn't very good news for me right then. In the space of less than 24 hours, I've gone from being ranked in the top three athletes in the world, potentially on track to win a medal, to having no race, no coach, and eight months before I have to make the Paralympic team. 12 months later, I won this medal, a silver medal at the Beijing Paralympics. And not only did I win a silver medal, better than I'd ever done before, I did it in a personal best time, an Australian record time, and an Oceania record time. I want to share that story with you because it shows the importance of focusing on what I call the acronym WIN. What's important now? If I got distracted by panicking and not focusing on what was important, finding a new coach and a new event, I would not have this medal. I would be distracted. And why I've told you that story today is because today for you is like your Olympic medal ceremony. It's the day you get to stand up here on your dais and receive the award for all of your hard work. And while you've been looking forward to this day for a long time, you might be feeling a bit sad as well because everything is about to change and the future, it's not certain. Well, there's a universal truth in life. Everything ends, everything changes, but there's also new beginnings. So if you're asking yourself those questions, what am I going to do now? Will I get that dream job? What if I don't get the career that I've always hoped for? I'm gonna miss university life. I want you to think back to my story. The bad day I had a year, less than a year before I won my Paralympic medal. And then think back to today. How good it feels when you have achieved your goal and your dream. You see, it's no accident that you're sitting here dressed like that today. And you look amazing, by the way. You set a goal years ago, and then you worked hard, or maybe not so hard for some of you. But you worked very hard to be here today, and you had to overcome obstacles. Each one of you sitting here who will come across this stage has your own story. Whether it was coming from school and having to move out of home for the first time, whether it was coming back as a mature age student, juggling work with study or raising a family, you've got your own journey and obstacles that have brought you to this point. And if you always remember that you can do this, you know you can do anything. Your degree and the letters that you now have after your name are proof of that. So believe in you and do not be that short poppy. Stand up, rise and shine like the university's motto. Take your place in the world and do great things. You are now writing the story of the next chapter of your life. Ironically, I studied journalism at this great institution and even I couldn't have predicted the dramatic turn that the last four years were gonna bring in the story of my life. I went from being the fittest, fastest athlete in the world to suddenly having an arm injury so severe I can't even type. 
Yes, imagine that, being the journalist who can't type. But that's what happened to me, and that's when I realized the true value of my education. When my body began to fail me, I realized that I always have my education, and my mind could think and ask questions and reinvent myself and find new ways to achieve goals and keep moving forward. I could work further on developing the charity I started called Sporting Dreams to help athletes with disabilities. I could come back and reconnect with my old university and begin to mentor the students through work integrated learning and help them with their career aspirations. Recently, a friend said to me, you're so lucky to be in a wheelchair and had that injury because I just can't understand why you're not depressed. It makes no sense that you're so passionate about life. You have so much drive and you're always so happy. Why? Well, here is the answer. I can assure you the answer to that question is because I know I did not waste a minute of my life of any opportunity that came my way to achieve what I wanted to before I had the injury. So I can stand before you today having achieved everything on the top of that bucket list. And I can tell you that from the other side of both the success of achieving your bucket list and going through a life-changing injury, life looks very different. So my advice to you is don't wait for the accident the life-changing event to start living your life. Start living it now. See, here's the thing. We all have a little bit of what I call PMS, even you men. We're waiting for the perfect moment. We have PMS syndrome. We're waiting for the kids to grow up, to graduate from uni, to get a better house, to get a better job. But it's never gonna come. Remember the story of my journey to Beijing, the best moment of my life. That was not a perfect journey. The perfect moment is right now. So what I learned from achieving my bucket list are two things that I want to pass on to you today. The greatest satisfaction in life comes not from setting and achieving goals, but from realizing that when you've done that, continuing to learn, to continuing to grow your education is the most satisfying thing you can do. And secondly, to use our education and knowledge to give back and to change the world. The more you give, the more you get back. I'm going to repeat that. The more you give to other people, the more that comes to you in ways that you can never imagine. I've chosen to do so through my charity. How will you spend your intellectual capital to change the world? What are your unstoppable dreams and what can you do today to make them come true going forwards? And on a much more personal level, which one of you might one day be a future Outstanding Alumni Award recipient? I'm so honored to have been the inaugural one. And which one of you sitting there today will one day be on this stage addressing the graduating class? As a proud alumni, there could be one amongst you. Is it you? So today, as you hang up your cap and gown and you walk out the university gates for the very final time, I want you to think about three things. Keep learning, give back, and remember, education is forever. Do not stop learning now. It's forever and it's for everyone. I never take for granted the fact that I am as far as I'm aware, the first person in a wheelchair to graduate from this university. I'm the second generation from a migrant family, not a rich background, and a woman on top of that. And if I was born anywhere else in the world, I probably wouldn't have this great opportunity. And to be honest, lots of us here wouldn't be either. We've won the genetic lotto being born here and having this opportunity. So let's make the most of this great opportunity. And finally, I want you to look back at the beautiful kangaroo colony as you leave this campus for the last time. Why do I say that? You see, remember the little pink girl that was sitting in a wheelchair watching the Olympics on TV and dreaming about wearing the coat of arms on her Australian uniform? On that coat of arms are a kangaroo, just like here, and an emu, and there's a reason for that. They are the two Australian animals who cannot literally walk backwards. So my departing message for you students today is take no backward steps. Keep moving forwards. Be a kangaroo. Congratulations, class of 2015.